So maybe you guys notice that there is no actual paper manual that's included with this printer and you're going to find the instruction PDF on this card here. I went ahead and put it on my phone. Yeah, this is a pretty good manual, very well laid out. These are all the parameters of the printer. Here it shows us what every part is, all the parts that are included. And then we got step one here and it's not too bad guys. It's actually quite straightforward of how to put this thing together and we'll go step by step. So for step one, they do want us to put the hot end on, but I think I'm gonna do that after step three because it will be a lot easier to put the hot end on when the gantry is still. And so for step three, we're gonna need four HM45 bolts, which are gonna be in here and everything is nicely labeled. That's these guys here, which are black. Let's go ahead and pull this foam out from the bottom. And we'll turn this sideways a bit. And you guys can maybe see here, right on top, there's like a little groove with two holes. And these go all the way down, and this is where our gantry is gonna connect. So we're just gonna set it right over. Watch out for your little wires there on the back, on both sides. Then we're gonna grab a bolt, go from underneath, and start it by hand. So to make it easier, you could prop it up with something, like a spool of filament, or whatever else you got. But yeah, it ain't too bad. Let's go ahead and grab our largest Allen wrench. And we're just going to run these bolts down. But we're not going to tighten them, so just run them down. And now we can flip around and do this other side. So this wire here is a little bit in the way. But if you just push it to the side, there's enough room. Yeah, guys, not too difficult. Again, we don't want to tighten this. Just run it down. And the reason for that is because we want to run our z-axis all the way down and we're just going to grab the belt up here and turn it and that's going to go down you can also turn the coupler and it'll go down it's just a little slower but yeah we're just going to go down as far as it goes and the reason for that is because we want the two channels here to be spaced out perfectly before we tighten them when we bring this down this should space it out right where it needs to be between the two channels so now we can go back to those four bolts underneath and tighten them up so snug them up pretty well as this is the only thing holding it up and we'll do the same thing here all right so now we're going to go back to step one and install our little bracket and hot end on the cradle here on our x-axis so everything we need is in this little baggie relief bracket and the four bolts so i'm going to bring this up a bit we actually got six bolts two long ones and four shorter ones so let's grab our hot end assembly you can see we got like little brass bushings this is where the bolts will go through this piece here on the metal cradle now on mine there is a zip tie here and I'm guessing this is maybe to warn you to check make sure this is not loose before you put everything on as it does appear that these metal rollers are adjustable here so let's go ahead and get the zip tie off and maybe you guys can kind of see that we do have a little adjustment there but on mine it seems like it's perfect so I think it needs to be adjusted so we can go ahead and proceed to installing the hot end we'll literally line up with these four points here just like this now we probably can see a little better from the back as this lines up at the same time our bracket goes here going on like this and so the two longer bolts will go on the top grab the correct allen wrench so it is a bit tedious here with holding everything together while trying to put the bolts in at the same time but <laughs> obviously it's not impossible and then two on the bottom which are the short ones that is a, probably not the best angle here guys but yeah they go under here and then two right here snug them up make sure you tighten them pretty well and that's it and so now we're going to go back to the front and then we're going to grab the last two little bolts and these are going to go right here and that's what's going to hold the cover from sliding off so yeah not too hard to figure out here pretty straightforward all right everything's looking good here and quite solid so we've done step one and step two and also step three so now step four is going to be installing the little side holder for the screen and that's going to be on this side right over here you can see the three threads so we've got the holder here i'll line up and then the bag here of bolts that says m420 and there's three of them we can see there's three holes and the one that's close to the metal here is a little hard to get to as it is magnetic slash the wrench is not long enough as you guys can see to turn it so it's a little bit tedious but obviously doable and yeah it'll line up on those holes there and you guys can see there so now we're just going to snug them up and something to note that the wrenches included do have like a rounded out end so it's quite easy to screw on an angle as it still continues to work even on a pretty off-centered path so and our screen holder is on so for step five we're going to be installing the screen itself which is very simple it's literally just going to sit 
and magnetize to the holder. And then we're gonna plug the coiled wire right here on the front of the printer just like that. And for step six, we got quite a few things going on here. We're gonna install the spool holder. We're also gonna install the wire that goes to the hot end little bracket with a bolt that holds that down and also the filament detector so yeah a couple things here for step six so since we're down here let's go ahead and do the wire which is this flat wire that comes out from the side and it's gonna go here and actually everything that splits is before the bracket like that and then everything after is going to the hot end here so. and this is the cable clamp bracket that comes with the bolt so it's quite interesting how narrow it is compared to our cable but we should be able to fit it in there and on the back of it you guys can see there's a little nub that actually sits in right there in that hole and then the other bolt goes in it's a little interesting looking how it goes but let's see if we can get it in there so i think we're gonna have to bunch up the flat wire a bit so it is quite close to the lead screw and actually wants to touch it at this angle but that's the way they show so i think instead of putting the nub into that hole i'm just gonna butt it against the outside here as that'll keep the cable away from the lead screw so for whatever reason they designed it where it touches the lead screw if you go deeper in but yeah i think this right here is perfect and actually keeps the cable exactly where it needs to be so maybe you guys can see a little better there how i installed it it was supposed to go all the way over here but it was touching the lead screw so i just went and put it on the outside like that so and if we go back to the front here we can see we got plenty of cable and on the hot end itself we can spread these little clips and then plug it in they'll lock in like that then we can put the cable into the strain relief bracket just like that so if we go to one end, we can see that the cable is definitely long enough to go either way. We can actually pull it back a bit if we need to. But yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so now we're here on top and we're gonna be installing the spool holder. So we got this main part here and there's a couple bolts that go down into the frame on top. And these are the M418s, two of them. So if we look here, we can see there's a couple nuts that move inside the channel. And what we're gonna do is line up the two holes there with those nuts just like that so we can see one of them quite easy and then the other one if you don't tighten the first one it should be quite easy also to kind of find and there we go so when they're both started we can go ahead and see about where we need to be and it's somewhere right in the middle of this logo here now if you can you might want to go this way a little more if the little wire here allows you but we'll see in a second the reason why is because we want to try to center up our spool as much as we can tighten it up so if we go from the side you guys can see we have a little brass insert there and that's going to hold our filament detector and so we got the detector itself and a little bolt here that goes through the bracket and then into here so yeah we're just going to simply screw the bolt in and you want to make sure the bracket is in the correct orientation tighten that up and it should be loose moves around and yeah our filament's gonna literally come from the top here down into the detector rolling on this holder here that we still have to install and it can go either way but we need it on this side as our detectors here so let's go ahead and screw that on all right now we can plug in the detector just like that and looks like there's enough reach and that's about all we can go this way with the whole thing but you guys can kind of see maybe so the filament is going to roll out into the detector and then down into the hot end and it can flex as it needs to quite easily all right and so that was part six and now we're going to seven which we're going to be installing the auxiliary cooler to the back and then for step eight we're just plugging everything in and that's going to be everything for the assembly so yeah all right so looking at the back of the printer of our x-axis we can see there's three holes our blower here with the controls going up and the blowing part down is going to connect right here on the three holes just like that and the three bolts are m445s which will go through the front and then into the holes where they'll thread in so yeah pretty straightforward here on installing the external cooler so we can go ahead and plug it in and the wire comes here from the side and actually we probably should have put it through the bracket here with the other wires but I think I can just slot it in there. There we go. So we'll plug that in and if we go to this side where our main cable comes out we can see we have a couple plugs here which are both x axes one for the motor which plugs underneath and the other for the end stop switch which plugs here on the side if we go to the back to the bottom corner we can see we have quite a few plugs here the large one that says z is going to plug in down here to the motor and then these just correlate one's larger and the other one's smaller i'm going to plug them in just like that 
make sure that they're not in the way of the bed traveling. Everything looks good here. So our wire wires are all connected already. Just make sure they're plugged in. And then to this corner, we have another Z plug for the motor. And that is all of the wires. And we're pretty much done, except for maybe we need to check the belts. So they're usually a little loose. So there's a tightener here for the Y and you want to feel it, how tight it is. Don't go crazy tight. And also for the X here, also make sure it's nice and tight. And you want to definitely feel the belt because you can't tell how much you're tightening it just on the knob, so. And as far as the rollers go, they're all pre-adjusted from the factory. Seem to be good for X and Y. Now the rollers that we can adjust are these that ride on the channels for the Z and mine are actually pretty good and I don't need to adjust them but if you do, you do have a wrench that you can spin an eccentric nut on the inside here on the two that'll go farther and closer. But if your wheels are close, I wouldn't mess with it as we do have dual Z axes lead screws and everything is quite stable. And as simple as that guys, we are done with the assembly 